Good morning beautiful people, Anton here from Warhorse Training. I'm back again just to talk about the five foods groups that are important to us, that are important to our, our movement, our, our sense of well-being and life. Now there is intermittent fasting and multiple different ways that you can eat. There's multiple different things you can do. There's multiple different diets, okay? And all of this is fantastic. You can count your macros, count your, count your micronutrients. You can look into when you're going to eat time frames and, and scales and calories in first calories out. Look into your working, right? Okay, that is great. That's fantastic. That's what people pay me to do. And if that interests you, you know, drop me a comment. I can do a tailor-fitted, personalized eating or dietary plan for you for £30. I also do a tailor-fitted, fitness training program for you to fit around your work, your life, and to fit that gap that we worked out in the last video that you do have to train, no matter how small it is. Anyway, five food groups, really important, okay? First food group we have is starchy foods. Now with starchy foods, it's your bread, you know, it's your rice, it's your pasta, okay? This holds a good three quarters of what our, our diet is. Now, what I want to say before I move on further than this is everybody's body is different and everybody's body reacts differently to what you do and eat. And that's why there is no one size fits all diet. There is no diet out there that everybody can stick to and enjoy. That's why there's the intermittent fasting craze, which I think is fantastic. There's the calories in versus calories out craze. There's the, the, the warrior diet. All I'm going to eat is what we had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years ago. Because there is, you know, all this subsidised food is not good for us. We never used to have it. There's the Viking diet, etc. Where we, we train back from our, our genetic pool to where we was and what we used to eat. You know, where we lived on, on, on fish, uh, potatoes, farming, whatever it looks like. And genetically we bring it back and go, all right, that's what I'm going to stick to because it worked back then. Okay? Everybody's different. But these five groups are important. You just need to tailor fit them to your training, your diet, your lifestyle. That way it'll give you this well-being. So starchy foods, it's about 25% of your diet, guys. You've then got fruit and veg. I would say 30, 40% of your diet. These are rough estimated percentages. I know I'm going to get towards the end and blast past 100%. The reason why is because it's different for every person. Okay, so a lion's share of it is fruit and vegetables. That's important. You've then got your milk, your dairy products, okay? So things like cheese, things like um, obviously the milk, the cream, etc. You've then got fat foods. That's the bit fat, salt, sugar, the bits, that's not that great for you. You want to keep that to a minimum to some degree. You've then got protein. Now protein is really important. You know, protein Again, with the eggs, you've got fish, you've got meat, you've got beans, you've got soy, you've got loads of different sources of protein. That should hit a good share of your diet as well. I'll send a picture up here of what I believe a generical type food split of these five food groups should be. I've looked at multiple different anagrams of how things should look and this is perfect for you and this is perfect for you, etc. Start with this foundation, guys. Tailor fit it to your needs. If you're finding yourself putting weight on, adjust them accordingly. Adjust your carbs, adjust your calories, adjust, maybe adjust your lifestyle, your training. You know, everybody's different. Low fat, high protein. Low carbs, high fat. Whatever works for you. Okay, guys? So, the purpose of this is just to talk about those five food groups that people seem to think about. You know, you've got number one, your starchy foods. Okay? Number two, fruit and veg. Number three, milk and dairy products. You've then got number four of being fatty foods, those things that normally aren't too good for you, but you can change them for, you know, good fats, essential fatty acids. And then you've got number five being protein, those building blocks of your muscle. I'm Anton from Warhorse Training, guys. Thanks for listening. Like, comment and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook, and now find us and follow us on Instagram. Thanks for listening, guys, and take care now. Bye.